One of the most famous trips in the annals of maritime voyages is that of the Mayflower. The pilgrims came over to these shores, and although they were small in number and virtual outcasts of society, they ended up casting a long and positive shadow to what became the United States of America. But every step along the way as they tried to live out their faith seemed to have been fraught with difficulty, yet they pressed on. Initially, they had two ships to come over to America, the Speedwell and the Mayflower, but the Speedwell proved unseaworthy. They finally decided to forget the Speedwell. Some of the passengers from that ship crammed into the already crowded Mayflower. Those unable to go that first trip planned to sail to America another day. They had two boats and one of them sprung a leak. So they were families that mothers and fathers would say, take my children to the new world. And there were wives who said, I will stay behind, or I have to stay behind. There were families that were split up. So there were, there were a lot of children who were given to other people to either stay in England or come over. There were families that were ripped apart. Half of them went, half of them didn't. The two-month delay meant that their food rations were down, and worst of all, they were about to set sail during the stormy season. Finally, the Mayflower alone set sail from Plymouth, England on September 6, 1620. This was already becoming a dangerous time to leave because of the approaching winter and hurricane season. After they had enjoyed fair winds and weather for a season, they were encountered many times with crosswinds and met with fierce storms with which the ship was wickedly shaken. William Bradford. It was an exceedingly difficult trip. For two months, 102 people were wedged into what they called the tween decks, the cargo space on this boat. They had about five and a half feet of headroom. No one was allowed above decks. All the hatches were battened down because of the terrible storms. Bow down thy ear, Jehovah, answer me. One of the things the pilgrims did to comfort themselves and remind themselves of God's care was to sing the psalms. Yet this gained them the ire of some of the crew members. One in particular sneered that he looked forward to throwing half of their dead bodies overboard. He would always be condemning them and cursing them daily with his grievous execrations. But it pleased God before they came half seas over to smite this young man with a grievous disease of which he died. And so was himself the first that was thrown overboard. William Bradford. This profane crew member was one of only two casualties of the whole voyage, the other being a young man who died. Only two deaths on a voyage like that was extremely unusual for those days. During the voyage, a young man named John Howland could easily have perished. In a storm, he was swept out to sea, but he grabbed a rope and was pulled to safety. John Howland would go on to live a long life in America and he even became the ancestor of three U.S. presidents, Theodore Roosevelt, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush. Amidst a terrible storm, the main beam of the mast cracked. Death was certain for the crew and passengers if this couldn't be repaired. The whole pilgrim story could easily have ended up on the bottom of the Atlantic. But one of the pilgrims had a large iron screw on board. Some historians argue it was a jack for lifting roofs onto houses. Others argue it was part of a printing press. Whatever it was, the main beam was secured with this large screw, and so the Mayflower was saved. On November 9, 1620, 66 days after their departure, they first sighted land off Cape Cod. Being thus arrived in a good harbor and brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean and delivered them from all the perils and miseries thereof, again to set their feet on the firm and stable earth. William Bradford. William Bradford was the great chronicler of the whole pilgrim story, which he wrote up in his classic book of Plymouth Plantation. 
We often take religious freedom for granted, but as Bradford noted in the very opening of his book, quote, it is well known unto the godly how ever since the first breaking out of the light of the gospel in our honorable nation of England, Satan hath raised, maintained, and continued wars and oppositions against the saints, end quote. There is a cost to living wholeheartedly for Jesus. The pilgrims paid that cost, and we are the beneficiaries of the religious freedom they sought for themselves and for their posterity. For Providence Forum, I'm Jerry Newcomb.